Hey, hey guys, hey Daniel, I'm live hey, too. Walter. Hey everybody. Hi everyone. Great, so are we good to get started, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, go Excellent. on. Excellent. Well, I'm happy to kick off. Uh, hey everybody, awesome to see just about 200 folks uh, in, on the stage. Really excited to chat with everyone. If you haven't met me before, uh, my name's Jesse. I'm the uh, the CEO of Energy Web. I've been with the organization since the get-go back in late 2016, and it's just awesome to see uh, all the folks in the room and all the, the growth uh, of the community and ecosystem in the past couple months. Um, so we're, we got a bit of a conversation structured for today. Myself and Walter are going to talk about a number of different topics ranging from uh, some really exciting new deployments uh, on top of the energy web chain and the energy web stack. We're going to talk a little bit about this hack that just happened and the impact on the energy web community um, and some other things. Uh, and then, of course, we'll leave it open for Q&A from the group. But I think before that, I'd love to share just a couple of highlights kind of from the, the from my seat anyway, coming in as CEO of Energy Web uh, over the past couple of months. So first, you know, one really good way to look at <clears throat> the growth of the ecosystem is also just the growth of Energy Web Foundation. Um, so now we've got about 75 different people working um, through EWF on uh, the project, um, which is huge. When we started, I think it was uh, me and maybe three or four other people getting the whole thing off the ground. So to see that kind of growth, both just directly about who EWF is working with has been really exciting. Um, those people are spread over something like 22 different time zones. So we're as international as you can get. Uh, we've got offices in California, in Colorado, and in Washington, D.C., in North America. If we spin over to Europe, we've got folks uh, in Berlin. We've got Walter and other folks um, in the Netherlands. We've got folks that sit in Spain, Portugal, Turkey, uh, again, 22 different time zones. And we just stood up an office in Australia uh, outside of Melbourne, which has been really exciting. It, it, not just team growth, though. Um, so if I start to look at some of the, the recent spate of projects being built on the Energy Web stack, we do the best we can to inform the community about all those different projects that are coming online. But frankly, it's getting a little bit hard to track, and we're going to start <laughs> developing some different tools to, to make this more transparent. But if we just look at the Crypto Climate Accord, which um, for those that are new to the community, this is an initiative that we at Energy Web launched to help basically use the Energy Web stack to decarbonize crypto. There's about a dozen projects just under the Crypto Climate Accord that are basically using our open source application called Zero to buy renewables. Um, so, so there's tons of new projects coming up under the Crypto Climate Accord recently. If I flip to the other side of a lot of the work we're doing in EWF, there are now enterprise deployments on the Energy Web stack that are using these decentralized identifiers or this R spin on digital identity to help different utilities tap flexibility from things like electric vehicles or batteries or solar in a bunch of different countries, in Australia, in California, in Spain, in Belgium, and Germany. So the, the real enterprise adoption of the Energy Web stack just carries on, and we're going to go deep on um, one of those deployments today on this conversation about the work we've been doing in California. We're really excited to talk about that uh, with this community first. And the, the other piece I wanted to spend a minute on, and, and Daniel can keep me honest here, is we've been really tracking uh, what's going on on the social side of things, because obviously with all crypto projects, that's a really important uh, indicator of growth. So on Discord, we're at almost 3,000 members. That's something like 156% growth um, since we started tracking that metric. Uh, on Twitter, we surpassed the 38,000 follower mark, which has been really exciting, especially over the past week. Um, and in Telegram, that channel continues to grow with new people coming in asking basic questions around the ecosystem. And we've also got about 32% more viewing members uh, in that channel. Um, last thing by, before I turn it over to Daniel for kind of the first piece of the official conversation here, um, I, I do think we have some new people uh, in the channel today. And I just want to give 30 seconds about what we do as a reminder. Energy Web is an extremely unique project in the crypto ecosystem. Um, we are focused on helping to decarbonize the global economy. The way we do that is by building open source technology built on top of and around the energy web chain. Uh, so it's one of the, the only real projects in the crypto ecosystem that's focused on using blockchain technology uh, paired with other technologies to help decarbonize the planet. 
is the simplest way I could do it in a sentence. So every single thing that you hear us talking about, whether it's um, enabling retail EWT holders to stake, whether it's about a new enterprise deployment on the energy web stack, that's all about decarbonization. Um, so uh, we'll go more into it, but again, that's the high level pitch on kind of what we're doing at EWF and encourage any newcomers to keep asking questions. We'll do our best we can to answer them. But let me, um, let me kick it over to Daniel to get us going down the agenda here. Yeah, so thanks, uh, Jesse. Um, I think the first point would be to talk about some actual news. Um, last week we heard about a liquid hack. So um, I think, Walter, could you give us a brief overview of what happened? Definitely, uh, Daniel. And uh, hi to. Uh, yeah, so basically what happened, uh, it uh, was the time of the year again, I guess. So the hacker I decided uh, to go to uh, the liquid exchange. Uh, uh, the one the uh, it actually was the first exchange we were listed on, so back more than two years, almost two years now. But and uh, they were quite successful. Let's say they have no idea who they are, of course. Uh, around 107 or so Bitcoin, uh, 14,000 ETH, XFP, lots of ESC20, and uh, unfortunately also they took uh, 483k uh, energy web tokens. So uh, again, just to remind it, uh, it was an exchange hack for those people. I've seen some of the comments in the the channel so there's it was an exchange and of course an exchange is a honeypot for many hackers and these guys were very well organized not just for the hack but also then what to do after the hack we can see that from the behaviors uh, there's nothing wrong with that chain there's much nothing validated that uh, all turns out to be extremely uh, robust but it, it proves the point again and uh, those who've heard me talk about it before uh, probably think that i sound like a broken record but Please, please listen to me this time. Never leave your tokens, uh, specifically your energy web tokens, on an exchange. If uh, everybody would have taken them off, then actually to a hack. Uh, looking at uh, the size of the market on liquid, and it was uh, actually a big amount of compared to the daily volumes there. But uh, to put things a little bit into perspective, so for eighty-three thousand energy web tokens sounds a lot, uh, and it is. Uh, but the daily average year to date, uh, so how many NH web tokens get traded every day is 290,000. And in August, it was 362,000 daily, every uh, daily average NH web tokens. So it's roughly one and a half days. So it, it's not that big. And we actually see it. Uh, of course, we see what the hacker is doing. He dumps cracked a little bit, you could a little bit, the price recovers uh, quite fast. But uh, <clears throat> We're doing a lot. So, Jesse, perhaps you're closest to it. Uh, a little bit of an update what the teams are doing. Yeah, so suffice it to say, we've yep. definitely, so suffice it to say, we've been tracking this incredibly closely and not just EWF, but also the, the validator set that we'll speak a bit uh, about in a moment. So the first thing is that um, when we saw this going on, we took that bridge down, as folks in the community probably saw, to really just try and help Liquid buy time and define their approach uh, to dealing with the security incident for their exchange. We started actively monitoring the wallets because um, we could clearly see <laughs> where these were. Um, and then also immediately briefing the centralized exchanges of any kind of movement. Um, and again, that wasn't just EWF, but the validators have been actively involved from the first minute that we saw uh, this attack happened. Uh, we've been doing regular update calls with these centralized exchanges, providing them with the addresses to try and accelerate uh, both not just the ability for where they can to restrict some of these uh, uh, incidents, but also just for them to be connecting with the authorities uh, for the investigation about what happened. Um, and there, we've also been on about a daily basis interacting with the board of Liquid um, to really just understand their approach and make sure that they are being accountable for taking care of the energy web token holders uh, that trusted Liquid. So that's really been part of our um, what we've been doing. Um, Liquid's been really professional today, um, or, or I think yesterday they announced they have about this $120 million USD debt facility coming in um, from the FTX exchange. It was the head story on Liquid, I'm sure, or on uh, Coindesk, I'm sure people saw it. Um, and we have an additional series of discussions going on with Liquid about ways we can further cooperate uh, going forward. So anyway, um, you know, as far as we can tell, uh, it's our strong impression that Liquid's going to continue operating. They're going to make their customers whole, as far as we can tell. Um, and the thing I'll announce now is that given the hacker, you know, is moving these funds to the centralized exchanges and Liquid has funding, um, I believe I just checked in with the DevOps team that the bridge is now up. So thanks, everybody, for their patience. 
Um, you know, in the end, of course, things can move over to Uniswap with this kind of architecture with the bridge being up. But uh, we, in conversation with validators and others in the ecosystem, it really seemed like, you know, providing more liquidity is going to minimize the impact um, that we could see from this unfortunate hack. So, uh, again, that's just a, a bit of a recap of what we've been doing to try and take care of the situation, both from EWF and speaking on behalf of the validators. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, just to uh, just to close before I give it back to you, Daniel. So uh, I'm also, of course, also we all are energy web token holders. So and I've seen some uh, stressed out and 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 uh, what to do, what not to do, etc. But I think it's very important. Guys, okay, only leave those amount of tokens on the exchange that you want to take the risk. So that already gives some ease of mind. <clears throat> but then again, also realize that it will probably be a little bit of a shaky period now. A price attacker. It seems to be an intelligent person. So the price goes down, but uh, there's a lot of confidence in the market price rebounds quickly. And, uh, you know, just stay calm, I would say. And of course, this hack and the price uh, movements that you now see has nothing to do with the fundamentals of Energy Web. It really has everything to do with the order book depth on an exchange and the amount of tokens the hacker sells in one go. That's just what's going on. Uh, and uh, we just need to go through it and then uh, uh, everything will be good again. So I think uh, what, I, what I'm really pleased upon also is also listening to Jesse and also see how we work with our validators, uh, how the DevOps teams have uh, taken care of this, how we've actually helped the exchanges uh, with some information to uh, to uh, to actually find something out more on the hacker. You know that that's what we can do. Uh, it's a hack of uh, of liquid. Uh, we're still <laughs> part of uh, this crypto ecosystem, and uh, I'm pretty sure one. Uh, I'm very confidential. Uh, uh, what I'm going to say now that uh, someday, uh, one day after this call, could be a month, could be a week, could be a year, another change will be hacked. That's just part of crypto. Uh, we're doing everything we can to uh, to make sure those hacks will not never take place on the solutions we deploy. But uh, like we said before, we're not controlling the. So that's it for the update. So Daniel, back to you. Yeah. So thank you for the update on uh, on Liquid. Um... I think it's time to talk about staking right now. So first of all, I would like yeah. to thank the community. <laughs> I would like to thank the community for participating in our staking uh, mechanism, some Volta. Uh, I think the community is very excited about staking and that there was a lot of feedback throughout the channels. So um, yeah, I think Walter, could you give an update on staking and when we expect it to be live on the mainnet? Definitely, <clears throat> a much more exciting topic, staking, I agree. And again, uh, it shows how strong a community we have. And uh, we've received really, really good feedback. And uh, the good news for all of us is we're not just going to listen to the feedback. We've actually taken a lot of uh, the feedback on board. And uh, believe it or not, Michael, uh, who, who you've uh, listened to on the previous stage, he's a Polish guy. And Polish people are, of course, very uh, stubborn, as we all know. But even he changed his mind. So really good feedback. <laughs> Uh, what nice. uh, uh, one of the one of the yeah yeah it was it surprised me I said no they they were right so uh, which is a big thing so one of the learnings we have that there will be a slashing page so, so you cannot lose the tokens that you put in uh, straight feedback we actually agree with it so those who provide the services can get slashed but if you as a patron stake with uh, the service providers you will will not be slashed your, your returns might be less but it only seems fair. Uh, and I think there's also uh, other improvements that we're going to do uh, that you get uh, your stake uh, uh, by depositing additional uh, energy web tokens. You perhaps can, in a period, uh, withdraw a certain amount. Uh, we did a lot of stuff on the UI. You can log in with your ID, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Walter, all coming great. Yes. Walter, could you speak a little bit louder? I think the mic is lagging a lot. Okay. Let me then, uh, let me do one change. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, better, a lot better. Okay, here we go again. Um, so, um, of course, um, we've written some articles, let's say half a year. And end of September is only a month. So where are we on launching in Q3? Well, I have good and I have bad news. So um, the good news is that we now are ready to but uh, the audit, because we one of course no, audit no. this. Water, water still lagging. Okay. Jesse, yeah, can you hear water clearly? 
Yeah, it's breaking up here and there. Um, Walter, if you go back to whatever you had previously and just speak a little bit louder, I think it should work. I'll give you a second. So we don't want to miss this part, so that's why I'm making sure that, yep, yep. <laughs> that everyone can hear what, what Walter's saying. I'm back in the old setting. Let's yeah, try it. Again. Yep, just speak a little bit louder and we'll, I'll go on okay. mute and try and make sure it's really clear. Yeah. Yep. The neighbors are already uh, complaining that I'm shouting, but uh, nevertheless, I'll but I can't go louder than this, guys, otherwise I'm going to trouble with the neighborhood. But uh, no, what I wanted to say is that, uh, of course, before we launch it on the mainnet, we really want to make sure that uh, it's properly audited, etc. We will never release any unaudited code. So that's also what we're doing here. And uh, yeah, the clear that we will not hit uh, the Q3 milestone that we set ourselves. It will be before Christmas, that's a promise. But I have two pieces of good news. One is uh, a request to the community for, for your support. Uh, that's around, uh, you know, uh, we're going to launch a bounty uh, and the bounty will be around a thousand energy web tokens or exactly tokens. And we invite you all to go and hack the contract that's currently on Volta. Daniel will talk more about it, but if you're able to hack it, you earn a thousand energy web tokens, real energy web tokens. And the other thing is, um, like I said before, we, uh, we, we hinted at Q3, we didn't make it, and uh, you know we want to be uh, a team at Energy Web that you can hold to account, and if we make a promise, uh, that you can actually also uh, uh, count on uh, the promise uh, to be met. So, what we will do, we will make up for the delay. And what we want to do is when we launch the staking pool, so let's say uh, pre-Christmas, uh, or probably a couple of months late, that the API, so the return on the first quarter when the pool's live, will be such that you get compensated for the delay. So that's basically what we want to do to make up. And I'll, I'll just, because there was a little breakup, thanks, Walter, I'll just recap it and uh, you guys keep me honest, make sure I'm saying it right here. So point one is uh, on Volta, we're inviting everyone to um, hack the contract. We really need to make sure the staking contracts are secure. Um, so yes, we want you to go after that uh, on Volta. Um, there is an award of 1,000 Energy Web tokens, not Volta tokens, Energy Web tokens uh, for that. And there'll be additional detail about that. Uh, the second thing was just on the timeline. So um, although there was the exp expectation of Q3 going live, um, we'll be go we're, that's going to be pushed, unfortunately, to Q4 because we really need to make sure that these contracts are audited and everything is working properly. Uh, in response to that, uh, this first batch uh, for the staking is going to have that higher um, uh, return for that first batch of staking is basically what we're tra talking about here. So a um, couple other just small things, getting some real-time feedback from the team. Um, anybody can request Volta tokens on our Discord. If you want to be one of the people going after those uh, staking contracts on Volta, uh, so please um, take advantage of that. And um, I think the, the the last piece is that um, you know, look, we're gonna continue to look for real world projects where we can give utility to Energy Web Token. And so all of these staking pools we're talking about are going to be related to real world assets and cash flows. This isn't some kind of hand wavy inflationary token model that we're talking about here with these staking mechanisms. Uh, everything that we just talked about. So if you are a patron, if you are a provider, that is about bootstrapping this utility layer of the energy web stack, which is one of our biggest differentiators in crypto. Um, and, the, and you've also seen the other staking models focused on things like the uh, Anji Mobisol project, which talking about at a later date. So anyway, um, we're just really excited about this. We think this is an, an, I personally think this is one of the most impressive uses of staking because it is tied to real world business activity and impact, which is much more you can say about a lot of other staking models that are out there. So anyway, uh, really excited to, I think we as an ecosystem have an opportunity to show the rest of the crypto industry how you can use staking to make the world a better place. And I mean that seriously. So really excited to see um, where this all goes and please keep the feedback coming. Hack those contracts on Volta. Uh, let's make sure that everything is as secure as possible. And Daniel, um, when is that bug bunny bounty going to be live on a, on a similar topic? Yeah, so next week we will announce uh, an active bug bounty. 
Um, so if you think you can hack our smart contract on Volta and show us how, you will be granted with 1000 Energy Web Tokens. And uh, for this Bug Bounty Challenge, you don't need to KYC. Just prove us that it was you and show us how you did it. Um, so more info on this next week, uh, probably on the lab page. And uh, I will also do a tweet about it. Um, so let's talk about uh, 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 the updates on labs. Walter, do you have updates on labs? Let's try if... Uh, if, if yeah, let's, let's see. see. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Or how yes. bad is it? Yes. No, it's good. Okay. No. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, uh, let's, uh, let's hopefully I continue. So yes, uh, lots to talk about uh, on labs. Obviously, uh, like we discussed already last time, we're working on uh, uh, the staking pools. Uh, we have uh, very good progress with uh, the energy energy access project, the Mobisol one uh, for electricity access in Africa. Uh, a lot uh, coming there, so watch uh, watch the channels. But uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, we're being told now by the, the our, our Stefan, our contact there, that a lot of uh, larger funds are also very interested to uh, participate in that because it really meets, of course, their their goals of uh, social responsibility, and they uh, they are also uh, you know basically putting some of the money into a, a construct that gives returns. So that's very interesting coming to uh, to our staking pools again to to yes's point with real use cases in the real world which is quite unique uh, and i think uh, the other one uh, that we talked about last time was the stable coin and that's something we uh, we will continue to work on and technically we're there but that's really where we're legal and regulatory context because as you guys probably all know there's a lot of banks and regulators around how to treat stable coins versus uh, cbdc's or local currency so uh, as you launched in a way yes. that it's regulatory compliant and that it works. So I think uh, that, and then uh, the other thing, to, uh, uh, but yeah, it's still early days, uh, but a little bit also more with uh, uh, making sure that the developers can find us. Uh, uh, training, we see there's an enormous need for people to learn more, not just about our tech stack and how to deploy it, but also on the dynamics of energy markets. Uh, we were already doing stuff like that for our members, and we're actually uh, probably going to decide to also open that up uh, for all our community so that they can really um, yeah, understand much better uh, the ins and outs of our tech and how it actually helps to decarbonize the world. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, let's say, uh, interest for that we can see. So, uh, so that's, um, that's it as far as I can say. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about going we have great engagement uh, and uh, like i said last time anybody we already got anybody with uh, a good business idea or an idea that actually by deploying it on the energy web does would help to accelerate the energy transition or get other projects over to the energy web chain more than welcome uh, we will definitely um, definitely uh, support it i think that's uh, yeah. that's as much as i can say yeah. yeah, and just yeah, to just recap, um, on okay. on the lab website, we already have our developers page. Um, it's not up yet, like it's up, but it's on coming soon. So um, look forward to see the developers page up and running because we want to attract more developers. And also, as Walter, you mentioned, I just want to uh, uh, say it again because I'm not sure if everyone could hear it. Um, we already have something like an academy for our members, and we are um, exploring to open it up for uh, the crypto broader crypto community as well. Um, so yeah, Bart, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just wanted to add, it, add that we've seen so many new newcomers coming uh, to our channels in the last couple of weeks. So I'd really like to explicitly thank the community for their spontaneous interactions with helping newcomers. It's not always uh, obvious to do that because they are always asking the same questions about wallets and where they buy the token and so on, but it's been so lovely to see uh, so many people helping out each other. So really thank you guys for that. Yeah, and we already have some videos and explainers online on the lab website to uh, explain like the basics. So um, yeah, we are working on it and we appreciate the community helping us. Um, so Jesse, I think it's time to talk about a major new deployment of the Energy Web Tech Stack, as you mentioned on Twitter. I think everybody is excited to know uh, uh, how, what, and when. 
Excellent. Well, uh, <laughs> you will be the you all be the first to hear it. So, um, official enterprise kind of general public communications about this project you're going to be going out um, sometime in the next month. And um, you'll probably understand why when I describe this. This is a, a very one of a kind kind of application. And to my knowledge, it's probably the biggest enterprise use of decentralized identifiers ever. Um, so let me do the best to explain it. And even though this is primarily a crypto audience, um, I'm going to do my best to actually just talk it through with kind of human language about what we're doing. And then um, it's pretty easy to understand how our tech stack plays. So just to bring a little bit of um, seriousness to the situation, look, um, this is a Californian project that I'm going to describe. I'm sitting in California. Um, my friends, my family are sitting in places with some of the worst air quality in the world right now because a truly stunning and terrifying number of wildfires are ripping through the state. We've also seen some of the hottest temperatures on record across, this, uh, across the entire state. And um, if we want to try and address both of those things, if we want to try and make it so that utilities have more tools to avoid overloading power lines in specific areas that might kick off wildfires, and if we want to also help utilities have more tools to make the grid more flexible so that we don't have rolling blackouts in this time of year in California, um, all of these assets that we at Energy Web talk about all the time, heat pumps, electric cars, solar panels, batteries, those assets have a hugely outsized role to play in helping utilities fight against um, these really significant um, electricity peaking consumption events and even these wildfires. And that's what we're focused on here in California. So what what California has had for a while is this thing called Flex Alert. So what Flex Alert is, is a system run by the California Independent System Operator. Um, so they're the, the largest um, utility in California. They have a system that they've been running for. So Jesse, your mic. Sorry about that. I broke now. up. Am I back uh, now? Am I okay. back now? <laughs> yes, you're back. You're yeah. back. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there's a system called Flex Alert in California. And Flex Alert is a system whereby the California independent system operator can send messages to anybody in California, basically asking them, hey, tomorrow or in two days or in some period of time, we think to make it very simple, everybody's going to come home, flip their air conditioning units on, and we're not going to have enough power. To the grid or there's going to be so much power on the grid that we need to change when it's going to be used to mitigate the likelihood that a, a transformer or a, a, a line could create a wildfire in a part of the state right so they have this system called flex alert and they've had it for years they've had something like tens of thousands of customers in california in this system but this flex alert system right again what it does is just asks you as an individual or a business to use less electricity right um it, it's a pretty uh, and the technology side, it's pretty basic. Um, it's a, a simple kind of email registration where you go to a website, you pop in your email, and then the ISO sends you some super basic information about when one of these flex alerts will be called. So um, I'll put on my energy web hat now. We have really been wanting to try and bring the energy web stack to California. In California, you've got really progressive policies around all things low carbon and all things green. Um, you've got uh, very active customers. You've got a lot of these um, assets like electric vehicles, solar panels, et cetera, that we talk about all the time at Energy Web. So we've been trying to bring the Energy Web stack to California to help the state to help accelerate the state's objectives around decarbonization. Flex Alert is our first foray into bringing the Energy Web stack to California. So what we've done is worked in close partnership with the ISO to um, enhance the Flex Alert system using uh, decentralized identifiers. So if you, I'll just make it really simple. If you go to, I think it's uh, flexalert.org right now, and you click sign up to receive Flex Alerts, there is a way to, to register in a, in a different way than the state had been using previously into this Flex Alert system. Once you're registered, you can now either get basically text messages, you can get emails. It gives hyper specific kind of targeted information about saying, hey, we're going to call this flex alert. We're asking for people to voluntarily reduce 
the amount of energy they're using in specific times. But um, from the, the ISO's perspective, this is a totally different tool. Now they're going to be able to see, and I've actually done this as Jesse, as a Californian. Oh, hey, somebody in a specific zip code has registered into the Flex Alert system, and they've said they're willing to provide flexibility to the grid at X date or NZ time, which is previously 24 hours ahead. That's a to- it might not sound like much to, to some folks who are, who, are, who are digitally native. That is a huge leapfrog from where they were, which was kind of having basically an email listserv that they blindly sent the communications out to and crossed their fingers. So we are using the energy web stack. We're using decentralized identifiers, which are created for every single customer that registers into this system um, to basically help the ISO be much more specific around where they're messaging to and procuring flexibility from. Um, so that, that's what we built with them. Um, this is just the first step, by the way. Uh, we wanted to do this with the ISO to prove the value that our tech stack can create. We wanted to show that we could provide something that could create DIDs for all 38 million Californians. So that's what we're doing right now. Official communications are coming out from this in the next month or so. That's why you haven't seen anything yet, because this is a real tool. This isn't some proof of concept, right? Um, This is a real tool that um, market participants in California are going to be using to try and procure this flexibility from people in the state. Um, So that's a lot of information. Um, It's really exciting to me as as somebody who's been tracking all this stuff in California. Um, Again, all of this smoke, all of these wildfires, uh, having these brownouts and blackouts happen at certain times of the year because we don't have enough flexibility. Um, This is a very powerful tool um, that we were able to build um, in pretty quick time. It's a a great use of decentralized identifiers and it's just a starting point, um, we think, for kind of how the Energy Web stack can create value in the state. Um, So that was a lot, but again, super exciting. Um, Yeah. You guys feel free to hit me questions during the Q&A or, or uh, Kobar, Daniel, Walt, any other things? So, that yeah, I wonder why that. you're hiring in Australia if the project is in California. <laughs> just right on to the next one, eh? Um, yes. So uh, I'll spend just a moment on this. Um, we have been hiring in Australia for some time. We've got a, a director in Australia and a number of other individuals uh, on the team. We're also hiring some additional technology folks uh, in country. That's been super exciting. Um, Basically, without, you know, disclosing um, everything, because it should be disclosed, I believe, um, in the next uh, 10 days or so, um, we have a a very significant rollout of the Energy Web stack uh, in Australia, which to me, I'm going to compare it to the the thing described in California. Um, the, The project in California is use of the energy web stack. But what we have coming is a a complete, fully realized vision, frankly, of what I thought was possible when I helped launch energy web out of Rocky Mountain Institute. Um, That's what we're bringing in Australia. It's going to touch everything, whether we're talking about DIDs, messaging, the utility layer, using the energy web chain. Um, It's all about helping different kinds of assets enroll into the energy market. So, um, Bart, the simplest answer is there is another incredibly exciting project in Australia that involves multiple grid operators um, and, and even uh, a number of some of the world's largest cloud service providers are also going to be involved in that project. We're in close partnership um, with one of the three biggest uh, cloud service providers um, in the country. So we're really excited to, um, to be able to uh, spill the beans on exactly what that looks like very soon. But um, that's why we've been hiring, Bart, is we're going to be part of a multi-year project in Australia to roll out the energy web stack there. <laughs> That's awesome, uh, Jesse, and uh, indeed, yeah. So you're talking about the, the, these major cloud service providers. I can think of three. I can think of Microsoft. But let's first talk about Google because we're already doing stuff with Google. Have any updates on the project? Yeah, so brief, I broke up a little bit there, Walter, but happy to speak briefly just about um, the, about Google. <clears throat> so for those who, who are, are new to the Energy Web community, earlier in 2021, we were really um, excited to receive a grant from Google, uh, google.org, um, in partnership with another group called Climate Kick, that's all about accelerating um, the deployment of the Energy Web stack in Western Europe. Um, and so we, we continue to do that work. We've got a lot of um, awesome progress with our partners, particularly in Spain, Belgium, and Germany that we're happy to speak about probably at a a later date, probably during the last stage of the year. Um, But we're also looking at, frankly, 
significantly broadening the kind of scope of that grant and work with Google. And the simplest way I can explain that is that, um, look, in the past 10 years, there have been quite a few initiatives focused on, you know, air quotes, bringing transparency about data in the energy sector. So basically making data in the energy sector more transparent. Um, what we're looking at, and, and I should say most of those efforts, in my humble opinion, have failed dramatically. If you want to look one up, check out something called the Green Button Initiative here in the U.S. And the reason those initiatives have failed is because they've been high on concept, low on tech. Uh, they haven't actually specified, you know, what kind of technology do we think is going to be most impactful to facilitate dramatic, bringing dramatic transparency um, in terms of data to energy markets. So what we're looking at, again, expanding the scope of that um, Google grant is to uh, launch a new kind of initiative focused on bringing radical data transparency to the energy sector. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, the biggest difference here is that we would be speaking more specifically to regulators. We don't really do that, right? We're mostly on the energy website focused on working with our members to build solutions. Sometimes regulators are at the table there, but the focus of, of something that we're, we're cooking in the oven um, is to think about how we can uh, bring some level of radical transparency to the energy sector, but more focused on bringing regulators along for the journey uh, instead of just the energy companies we regularly work with. So keep an eye out for official comms from Energy Web uh, going forward. This is going to be a pretty big um, uh, project if we can pull it off and a pretty significant expansion to what we're already doing with the support of the Google Grant in Western Europe. Um, but we'll be able to say more um, uh, a little bit on a forward basis. I guess I guess I'd like to say one more thing, uh, maybe before we open it to Q and A, Daniel, is that um, <clears throat> a really interesting thing for every single project I just talked through, whether it's the California one, whether it's Australia, whether it's this work um, supported by Google in the Western European context with these DSOs and TSOs, and, and thinking about data transparency, a lot of the time. We are the first, um, what's the best way to describe this? A lot of these companies in energy have not used cloud before. Or if they have used cloud, um, it, it's been in a pretty light touch way. Well, every single one of these applications really has pretty significant demands as it relates to cloud services, right? And you, if you look at these different markets, you know, Microsoft is very active with major energy market participants in Australia. Um, Amazon is a, is a big cloud service provider for a number of energy companies. Uh, in, in California. And so with all of these different projects we're doing in different places around the world, Energy Web is acting as kind of an on-ramp for some of these companies to cloud. So it puts us in a really interesting position to hopefully partner with some of these large companies um, as it relates to digitizing the energy sector um, and, and again, helping to onboard some of these grid operators um, to something that in many cases is for them, which is cloud. So that's the last kind of through line I would describe for all those projects. So brilliant, a lot of news, a lot of updates. Um, so let's move over to uh, uh, the Q&As. Um, guys, there is a button in Discord and uh, it says request to speak. So if you want to ask something live on stage, just press the button and we will give you access on stage. Okay, already two people. Yeah, so Furkan, wait, hold on, Mark. Uh, let's see if it's working. Furkan, you need to accept. Yes. Yeah. You guys hear me? Welcome. Yes, yes I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, uh, I would like to ask a very basic question. So, uh, what I've seen so far, so in order to, uh, so, I mean, you should have at least 10,000 EVT, uh, EWT. So, I mean, uh, is it good thing to uh, have EVT, EWT's price increase or it should be uh, lower so to have the attention from the companies more easily? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I think that would be the, my question. Uh, and the second one, so uh, I, mean, EV, I mean EWT, it's a huge, like uh, I've been following EWT since, I don't know, forever, let's say. And so uh, maybe one of the fever company that has real uh, good product working, let's say. And, and still, uh, you guys are not 
listing uh, EWT in the, some other uh, exchanges. So is it maybe on purpose? Because the price will pump up, it's for sure. So just, just uh, these questions. So Jesse, two questions. One question is, is yeah, it interesting yeah. for, okay. I've got it. Great. Furkan, thanks for that. All, all happy to have it. And, and uh, just a reminder for folks coming in, please, this is not a place to talk price speculation or anything like that, but we're happy to answer the, the questions on the merits. So thanks, Furkan. So the first one is, um, uh, and if you could go on mute, I think there's quite a bit of background noise. Um, Furkan, uh, thanks. Sorry. <clears throat> That's okay. Um, so first question, uh, when we're approaching enterprises, the price of EWT doesn't impact the, uh, how do I say this? The uh, profitability is the wrong word. It doesn't impact the business case of the applications that they're building. Uh, EWT could be worth, you know, a, a million bucks. It could be worth a buck. Doesn't matter. The way that this utility layer is constructed is it will be a, a basically a marketplace for cloud services. And so there's going to be a very strong incentive for service providers in that utility layer to be competitive in terms of the pricing that they're offering. So again, um, the, the, and probably not enough time on this, on this stage to go into detail here, but to suffice it to say, for the enterprises we work with, it's not a problem if EWT is at a high price or at a low price. It's, it's baked into the way that this layer works. Uh, on the second question, again, uh, Walter and I have said this several times in the past, uh, we have gone through the process um, with, with all of the, the primary exchanges. It's not about us not wanting EWT to be accessible on the, the largest, most trusted um, exchanges out there. It's just that, again, as we've said in the past, the listing processes are pretty opaque. Uh, we've done everything we can on our side, and um, it's just in a bit of a hurry up and wait situation. Um, yeah, that's the best yeah. I, can, I can offer. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Um, the next one is Gator. So Gator, you should accept right now. See something? Yeah, there he is. We can't hear you. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Gator, That's could you fix your mic? Me. And then, <laughs> Gator, could you fix your mic and then uh, request again? So I will give someone else a stage right now. Um, let's go to uh, Juan. So Juan, you need to accept. No, Juan. Rish. I'm just like inviting everyone. Okay, Rish is there. <laughs> nice. Hey, Rish. Oh, hold on. You got too many people now. I will mute. Yeah, go on, Rish. Except you should uh, click the green button on top of your screen. Yeah, I yeah. did that. Okay, first of all, uh, congratulations on um, the aspects you talked about so far. Uh, my question will be like specific to the India part. Uh, last year, uh, you guys uh, collaborated with the India Smart Grid Forum. Is there any kind of development around that uh, happened or any kind of thing? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Rish. Um, I, it's been a little challenging, um, frankly, just with COVID, to have you know much of a real presence um, beyond the the things that have been publicly communicated with the India Smart Grid Forum. Um, so look, the communication channels are there. We're in touch with the group. We've also been speaking with a number of other, a number of other energy companies in India, focused specifically on zero. Uh, it's pretty tricky to buy renewables in India for a lot of major companies that have operations and load there. So we're definitely still in conversation and trying to architect applications with folks in India. But you know, um, having done some work there in the past, Rish, it's really hard to build relationships remotely, uh, just speaking from experience. So um, as soon as hopefully the world kicks COVID to the maximum extent we can, uh, it's one of the first countries that I'd like to come to to try and establish a bit more of a physical presence there. But um, that's where we are with India. Thanks for the question. Uh, Gator, let's do a second attempt. Yes, can you yes. guys hear me now? Yes, uh, good. It's working. I think my mo microphone was not working before. Um, anyway, I had a question, uh, Jesse. You talked about the Google partnership and Western Europe. Um, I recently discovered this company called Blocksmove, and um, from what I've heard from them, they're going to use the DIT registration uh, application from EnergyWeb as well. 
and teams would be set up for that. Um, is this something that will be announced um, soon, or is this something that um, uh, that you guys are uh, still working on? Uh, sorry, the company was Blocks Move. Is that what you mentioned? Yeah, I heard they would um, try to apply your DIT registration uh, application. And yeah, they were going to set up the team with Ilya and 50 Hertz from what I heard. Gotcha. Well, that's very good research, uh, Gator Green. So um, <laughs> with the just for the rest of the folks that don't know, um, one of the other large applications we're building is in Germany and Belgium with Ilia Group. So they're the transmission system operator. They actually have two companies underneath them. We've built for them basically a DID based platform to enable electric cars and charge points to be able to participate in the energy market. Um, we're uh, Gator, I don't have a perfect answer because we're in conversation with actually a lot of mobility service providers and e-mobility companies. Um, I'm going to have to go back to the team because I'm not sure exactly what we can and can't say right now. But uh, look, yes, uh, many uh, companies like Blocks.Move um, that we are directly in conversation with and integrating to the Energy Web stack right now. Great. Um, Jesse, let's do two or three more because we have like uh, 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 nine questions right now. So let's try to do, do... yeah, Juan. You hear me? Ah, yeah. Yes, go on. Uh, hello, I'm excited to hear Guevara, Jesse, Walt, and Daniel. Uh, I have a question. What could be the difference between uh, conventional staking and the staking energy web? And my second question is, how blockchain energy web helps uh, to mitigate CO2 emissions. Sorry, what was that? What kind of emissions, Juan? Uh, so, so CO2 emissions. CO2, CO2 like emission. carbon dioxide. Carbon, okay. carbon, uh, yes, carbon emissions. Yeah, yeah gotcha. CO2. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tackle the second one first and then maybe offer my perspective on staking, but uh, Walter's much more of a technologist than I, so he can probably, he might have a different perspective. Um, CO2 is pretty easy one. Um, and there's two ways which the energy web stack kind of uh, gets rid of CO2. The first way, just look at zero. Um, zero makes it easier to buy renewables. Uh, if, if I'm a big company and I'm trying to buy renewable energy specifically in an emerging economy, it's really hard to do that right now. Typically, you got to pick up a phone, you got to talk to a bunch of brokers, and you got to set up these pretty complex uh, transactions. What we're trying to do with Zero is make it really easy for large companies to purchase renewables. Um, and so that's how. If they purchase renewables, there's less power coming from the grid from larger uh, thermal power plants. The second way, look at the thing I just described in California or um, what I was hinting at in Australia or the work in Belgium. If all of these different customer owned assets, batteries, heat pumps, again, stuff you just have in your house or that businesses already have, these assets that can flex exactly when they use electricity. If we can use those things to maintain grid balance, that means we're not using thermal power plants that run on coal and natural gas to balance the grid. So if we pull that off, there's less CO2. Now there's, that, that's like the simplest explanation I can offer. It's a little bit crude, but that's maybe the simplest way to describe it. Look, on the staking question, why why are we saying that it's differentiated? I'll give my very crude answer, but Walter, you should maybe give a more nuanced one. Um, look, a lot of these other staking models, and to be clear, like I, I, I even personally participate in some of these other staking models. Um, you go into an exchange or you go into some other UI, you click a couple buttons, and bam, you're earning an annual return. What's really happening behind the scenes with some of those? Yes, staking is used to secure, you know, slots and different parachain auctions. Yes, it's 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 used in some other ways to do some to facilitate some kind of behavior on chain. But is there really a fundamental connection between your staked crypto and something happening in a real enterprise application? Is there any kind of relationship between your staked crypto and some sort of real tangible kind of asset happening in the background. Uh, I'd say, generally speaking, no. But just look at you know one of the staking models we're talking about here with Anji Mobisol that we've articulated. I put tokens in. Those tokens are then used by a company to issue a loan to a real person who's then gonna use 
those um, the value from those tokens to deploy a solar system. That solar system is going to reduce the amount of electricity spending that that person has. The cash flows come back to the person who issued that loan. And at the end of the day, I earn a return on my staked tokens. That's very different <laughs> from most of the other staking models that are out there. Maybe I'm being a bit too too mean to some of the other staking or bonding models. I don't know, Walter, what do you think? I like it and I agree. It, this is this is the difference. We uh, Real assets in the real world accessing real cash flows and the use cases will all be around decarbonizing the grid. And uh, that's the difference. Um. Okay, that's we have more. some other people we can let in. Yeah, let's do one more. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, examples of companies that are ready for the staking model? Like what kind of services will they provide? And are there any customers uh, waiting for it to use it? So I can speak a little bit on the demand side. Um, so uh, again, I, uh, this is going to sound really boring. Think about the applications I just described. So you've got companies needing significance. They need to use the RPC nodes. They need to use what's called the cash server. They need to procure, um, basically use cloud to send a lot of messages. Messaging is a big one. And data needs to be stored somewhere. So if I look at the companies that we're building these solutions with right now, those that's the demand on the cloud services side, right? So the demand is there. We're basically building those applications. Um, what we really need is on the supply side. So who are the first service providers that are going to come into the ecosystem? Look, I've been in conversation with a number of companies, um, both just uh, smaller startups who are probably represented by some of the folks on the line here that want to actually provide the supply of some of those services. I can also say that several of the validators on the existing energy with main chain will likely be some of the initial service providers. Um, so yeah, look, there's a there's a pretty rich uh, number of companies, both on the demand and supply side from the utility layer. Uh, Walter, I don't know if you've seen anything else you want to comment on. No, the only thing to add, I would say that in our discussions with these cloud service providers, uh, there's a lot, lot of interest from these big giants to also enter in these type of uh, business models. So, uh, yeah, and we're creating the market. Huh? It doesn't, it does not exist. We're going to deploy it first on the dots, and then, uh, yeah. So once we get it going, I think it can become uh, quite a common uh, yeah, infrastructure solution for many other ecosystems. Would be my expectation. Okay. So I think Daniel, are we uh, we all set to wrap up? Yes, I think that's it. Um, sorry, guys, uh, 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 we requested to speak. Uh, please feel free to put your questions in uh, in the channel so that I can answer them uh, separately. Um, yeah, Jesse, over to you. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Hopefully, this was informative. Um, you know, as you can probably tell from just this conversation, we've got a lot going on in. Community. Uh, we will be hosting another stage event around Q4 this year. Um, so again, between now and then, expect lots of updates, etc., on everything that we described here and additional projects. We're growing the Energy Web ecosystem every day. We're firing on all cylinders, whether it's on the enterprise adoption front or just engaging with the uh, the broader Energy Web community. So again, thank you so much. Um, it, you keep the questions coming. Keep the ideas coming. Drop everything else uh, as Daniel described, and uh, yeah, really look forward to the uh, the next quarter. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bart, anything else you wanted to mention? That's it, right? No. Okay. No, Thank you, guys. There's something All right. wrong with my voice, but that's. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you all for attending. Catch you later, guys. <laughs>